Um, but in terms of more the overall setup, I guess that's where I'm kind of struggling a bit more. So we have our entire, I guess, like, could you call it like a class? This viz class, I guess, right? Or what? Yeah, it's a function. Uh, function, okay. Because then it also contains the container function, correct? So viz here is a, is a function. And this syntax, these are two arguments to the function. So it's a function that, that accepts as input two arguments. The first argument to the function is referenced internal to the function as container, which will mm -hmm. be a DOM element. And then yeah. the second argument to the function is what's called an options object. And okay. it's actually one object. And right here, we're using ES6 destructuring to pull out state and set state from that options object. Yeah. So yeah, so this container DOM is pointing to the, like the tree, each drive, like the, the HTML tree element you want to do it. So we're, that's why we're setting the container to app, right? Yeah, and you can see in index.js what it is. It gets yeah. set to yeah. Yeah. App. Yeah. the node for app. And then if you check index.html, you can see that app is there on line nine. Mm -hmm. So yeah, it's just okay. a common pattern where like there's a div on the screen and then you write some code that will inject stuff dynamically into that. And the reason I structured exactly. it like this is so that it's relatively generic. So if, if you wanted to, you could pull out this code and pull, put it into a different project. And all you have to do to integrate it into an existing code base is to invoke it and pass uh, whatever container it is. Okay, yeah, that makes sense. So then within this, you are setting your creating an SVG element that is, you're you're putting it in the also the container, and then the mouse move stuff makes sense. So that's just like a function that you can um, also do when the mouse moves. But I guess the state and the set state is kind of where I get a little confused. Again, um, so on both of the mouse move and the click, you're setting this. You're changing the values of the state. Where is the set state in index? Yes. So set state itself is a function. Yep. That is saying. So in JavaScript, this next is just like the parameter you plug into it. Yeah, it's an argument. Oh, I say argument. Yeah. Um. So it's saying that it's then saying the state equal to. This is, I guess, this is where I get confused next. Like, I don't get this line of code. Yeah. I know what it's doing. In terms of, it's like, I know what it's doing, but I don't get how it necessarily works, I guess. Totally. Yeah, so next is the function that you pass in to set state when it gets invoked. And the idea of, yeah, you could, let's take a look at that. So when we call set state, we pass in a function. And right now, that function is not, using its argument, which is the previous state, because it doesn't need to. It just mints a brand new state object each time with X. Okay, yep. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, yeah. Oh, okay, okay. That makes sense. And so then, yeah, you just need to reset. Yeah, okay. And if, in case, just in case the syntax is not clear, it's using ES6 um, arrow functions with the implicit return. And so if you look at like line 15, it calls set state with a function, and then that arrow points to something that's in parentheses. What that means is it, it's implicitly returning that object that gets created. So let's go back. Uh, yeah, does that make sense? Okay. Yes, yep. So in index.js, on line 14, when it calls that next function, the returned value from next in this particular case, will be that new object that has X and Y. And that will be set to uh, the new value of state. Yep. And s state can be changed over time because it was declared on line four using let, not const. That means yep. we can reassign to it and it just will accept a new value. Okay, and, that makes sense. And then it calls render. And render just calls our viz function and it passes in uh, the container, which is no different than it was before. 
passes mm-hmm. in set state, which is no different than it was before. And it also passes in state. And state here is the current value of state. So this is the updated version of the state. Okay, yeah. I guess the one thing I did, did confuse you on that was that you're using render, using like a function within, not within itself, but obviously set state has render in it, but then render is calling set state. Yeah, it's a circular reference. It is. Which is mildly confusing, for sure. Yep. But it works because of this property of JavaScript called hoisting. Uh, it, it means that even though set state is defined on line 13, we can refer to it on line 9. Okay. As long as, calling, as long as you're not calling render yet. Yeah, as long as render is called after set state is defined, then we're good. Makes sense. And then, so you have to call render first initially just to have it set, like just to have it um, start up, correct? Yeah, that's just the startup call to, that's just the first yeah. render to kick off everything. And at that point, state is just an empty object. Mm-hmm. And by the way, this is, this whole pattern is inspired by React. Um, it's actually compatible with the React API if you use React hooks. Uh, but I don't, okay. I don't, you know, knowledge of that is not a prerequisite for understanding this itself. Okay, yeah. But that's just yeah, some background. Have, want to, yeah. Just some background as to why I chose this particular pattern, which at first glance may seem overly complicated. Yeah, no, it definitely was a little bit complicated, but um, that does make sense to me now. Um, I think I will try to play around with it more, and that will really test us. You know or not because easy when you you say something and then I'm like oh that makes sense versus actually trying to do something with it so totally um totally. 